I had a question just to start off with the with the topic that we have in hand of super conscious leadership. Yes. So, uh, I had a question like you know it is very difficult for uh, an individual like me. मतलब अगर मैं सिर्फ अपनी बात करूं तो मेरे लिए शायद consciousness achieve करना ही in the entire lifetime a very difficult thing. Now, how practical or how difficult is it for me as an individual to even think about super consciousness when I find uh, attaining consciousness even difficult? I might say that I am conscious on paper. I paper pe likh dunga, I am conscious, but I might not be, and I think I am not even conscious about myself in the real life. So, how how to uh, travel that journey from consciousness to super consciousness? Nidesh, there is uh, no uh, solid. line of distinction between consciousness and super consciousness the word super consciousness has been used by me and has been traditionally used just to emphasize the fact that it is possible to rise above ordinary consciousness so consciousness has several levels and we all experience those levels in our daily lives hmm? sometimes you are angry and you very well know that you are not as conscious in that moment as let's say when you are concentrating on something wonderful hmm? uh, you might be drunk and you very well know that your consciousness is then uh, drowned in liquor it's not operating properly so it's this levels of consciousness and you could say that the higher levels of consciousness hmm, are just being uh, for the for the sake of emphasis called as super consciousness hmm. now being a human being you anyway will not feel easy if your consciousness as at its lower levels what is meant by these lower levels freedom is our nature no creature in the world really enjoys bondages hmm? lower levels of consciousness are related to a state of mental slavery the more heavily conditioned one is hmm? the lower is his or her state of consciousness and the more liberated one is internally hmm, the higher is said to be the state of consciousness and beyond a point we do not know what that point is there is no real formula to put your finger on that but beyond a certain point you kind of uh, become entitled to say uh, the fellow is super conscious hmm? just as you sometimes say you know superman right but but again again those all the superman and superheroes uh, they have unbelievable uh, powers and stuff that a normal human being cannot do in case of super consciousness it's just the degree of internal cleansing internal freedom hmm, that has increased it's not as if it's a different dimension the difference you must take as that of degree because if you start taking super consciousness as another dimension then you make it inaccessible to yourself you say well it is something that belongs to uh, another realm another world and maybe i'm not entitled hmm, to be there but it does not belong to another realm it belongs right to the world you and i are in as we keep on um, unchaining ourselves more and more as we keep on allowing that uh, inner revolution as long as we keep allowing our inner inner discontentment to be expressed in the form of 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 demolition of the walls that encage us hmm? we are moving from consciousness to a higher degree of consciousness which you can call as super consciousness hmm? and, and it's and it's not a moral or a spiritual imperative 
it's an inner demand who would uh, like to be fettered caged enslaved just nobody hmm? but still almost all of us live that way for two reasons first we are often ignorant of how the mind operates what its nature is and we keep assuming that the stuff of the mind is its own we do not realize that the stuff that the mind is carrying are external bondages imposed upon it our thoughts for example are not really our own even our feelings are really not our own they, they, all this stuff is heavily conditioned so that is one reason ignorance and the second reason is fear even if you come to know that there is a state of slavery inside it requires uh, courage and sacrifice to stand up and pay the price right we do not want to stand up we fear we don't want to pay the price and uh, that's the reason why this beautiful opportunity of life is often wasted and one more thing sir so uh, do you believe like the if if this is an important subject of uh, you know talking about super conscious leadership so does do you think it as a need that you know this should also come as curriculum uh, as part of curriculum in b schools this should be the first thing that should be taught this is the foundation of everything you see because you can you can teach so many skills in b school hmm? and you can give formula and theory and models and cases and one is loaded with knowledge but who is the one who would apply that knowledge who is the one who would practice those skills and towards what ends hmm? there are so many leadership courses but lead towards what i mean even a pied piper is a leader the question is what must the others look up to you for and what is really your intention in standing before others and talking to them and occupying their mind space and influencing their lives why do you want to do that at all and in answering that question you have to look at yourself hmm? what is my relationship with the world what is my relationship with these people um, i am calling as my followers what will be the influence of my relationship with them my several interactions with them and when you are clear of these questions then your influence on the world in general is healthy otherwise a majority of the leaders in every sphere of life have been just mischief makers have they not been we know that right and in fact it is far easier to relate to a set of followers using some mischief you can probably connect easily to the point of slavery within the other because that's the point where comfort lies that's the point where habit lies and it's difficult to relate to the other telling the other of freedom telling the other to stand up and pay the price and work hard and take the blows therefore majority of leaders and their listeners or followers or whatever they are in a state of bad relationship leaders hardly have the courage to tell the followers the truth if at all they know the truth firstly and secondly followers are not at all looking up to the leader to be told the truth both are in a shallow relationship where both are just entertaining each other both have their very limited objectives that really help neither party hmm? so that's the reason 
you have to differentiate a healthy relationship from that kind of a rot. So we use the term superconscious leadership. 